And uh, when you think of the psychology of why social media was created, it was created essentially by Facebook. Let's just give them the credit, not MySpace. Let's give Facebook the credit. And it was a way to connect with other college students on other campuses and friends from high school to connect with people, not to be marketed to. And now, of course, social media has evolved to where it is today. And it's actually getting to the point where I think people are getting pissed about anybody who goes onto social to market their business. I actually think there's going to be a reverse psychology component in the coming years that is actually going to destroy people's social media strategies and destroy their image because all they do is talk about their business. Yes, we are live in the Zoom. And now we are live on the Facebook. Welcome on we the go. Facebook. Welcome on Boom. Zoom. And uh, we are back with uh, Michelle Berman uh, with the IG Power Method. And today we're going to talk about using Instagram as a weapon for social growth for people in leadership positions. But But before you jump off, because you don't feel like you're a leader, I'm gonna argue that you if are. you're a real estate agent, you are. Uh, and so uh, you're gonna you're gonna learn something today. So Michelle, take it away and I'm gonna be your peanut calorie. Yeah, the biggest thing with this conversation and, and I feel like I have it every day in different forms, but the reality is that we are all leaders, whether we have one employee, whether we have a one VA, whether we have nobody and all we do is report to our clients, right? Whether we are running large organizations or we're the CEO or we are uh, somebody running a team of five, like it does not matter. The truth is that we really are all leaders. Um, anybody in any position that has somebody that reports to them, even if it's our spouse, right? That counts. So the whole conversation that I am really excited to have with you today, Jeff, is for those of you guys who might be sitting idly uh, with your social media, maybe because you think you're too busy, maybe you think you don't need that to be successful. Um, that is ultimately what I think we need to talk about today. Um, Jamie says, yes, she is her husband's leader. Damn right, girl. Just kidding. Um, I'm not like a feminist by any means. My husband is definitely the boss, but I'm a strong type A. Um but it's fine. Um, Jeff would probably argue that his wife is the boss too. Let's be honest. There's no um, argument. There's no argument there. But, <laughs> but truly the reality is that this, this particular conversation ties into a couple of things. Are you sitting there thinking I'm too busy? My business has got too many things going on. I don't really need to focus on this. Um, or are you kind of the opposite, right? Where you feel like it's just you. So your clients love you anyway. I don't really need to be focusing on this. And I think that it is really the point of this conversation because there are two ends of that spectrum. Um, so again, the truth that Jeff and I are talking about is if you have just one person that assists you, if you, even if it's just a virtual assistant, you're a leader, you're also a leader. If you have a company with 500 direct reports, you're a leader. If you have somebody with six people that you have to figure out, figure out payroll for, right. Even if it's a TC, um, all of that counts. So as leaders, if you want to continue to show up, up that way, we really have to remember how did you get to the position you're in in the first place? Uh, and then we have to remember to go back to that and talk about it on social media. And Jeff, I think you do a, a great job at, at this. Um, you know, I certainly do everything I can to do that as well. Um, but Jeff, you and I have talked about this literally live on this webinar before that you didn't get to where you've gotten to in your career, especially on social media overnight. And that's important to understand. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, go, going back to that leadership conversation though, too. I mean, I'll use a different word, um, authority. You know, you you are an authority over a lot of things, and a lot of us don't look at it that way. And um, and and that's kind of where I think this whole thing starts to gain legs when you kind of change the lens by how you look at yourself. Uh, and realize that you are an authority on anything that you're doing on a regular basis. So, and I, I'll use, I use like golf as an example. And, and even if you don't play golf, you can understand this analogy, but most golfers, including myself, 
are pretty average. Um, but by the fact that I'm probably in a, my, my, the, my, the minority, like 2% of Americans that play golf and play it consistently and have a handicap, even though I think I'm a pretty average golfer, I'm an authority over most humans. And so I can speak to that because I just play more often, even though I'm not Tiger Woods or whoever you want to throw, throw any professional into that ring. Um, you're an authority. You're doing it regularly. You, if you have kids, you're an authority on raising children because you're doing it, you're living it. And so uh, that's the way I kind of look at that is, is um, you can kind of shift that word, which might change the way you look at, look at yourself. Yeah. And I think it goes back to as leaders, as an authoritative figure in general, which I love that word. If you want to continue to show up that way, not just today, not just tomorrow, right? You have to remember that part of this journey and part of what I believe social media is, is an uh, you have the ability to talk about it. You have the ability to say two years ago, three years ago, six months ago, you know, I wasn't in this position and, and I posted on Facebook yesterday, um, I've been training for a 5K um, and 5K for a lot of people is really not very hard. It's not very far. Um, lots of people run, right? It's not this big deal by any means, but I have not run or ran consistently in a long time since I was a competitive CrossFitter in 2018. Um, and so for me, when I, when I, the purpose of the post I posted yesterday was to say, I just had the best run of my training. And since I started about six weeks ago, um, and honestly, probably one of the best runs of my life, honestly, like compared to my heart rate versus my mile per hour pace. Um, and I'm training for another 5k the second week of January. But the point of the post was that, how does that relate to business? How does that relate to what I'm doing in my own business? And it comes down to one thing. It comes down to showing up consistently and creating a presence that makes people feel connected to me and makes people want to come back and continue to kind of be on that journey with me. Um, and then what happens, which is the whole point of this conversation is by showing up consistently, I continue to build credibility around the things that I post when I talk about how to do Instagram better, or when I talk about how you can level up the way you do engagement or any of the things that I might talk or address as far as social media, um, or specifically Instagram, cause that's my jam, but all of a sudden my value is perpetuated because I show up as a person as well. And I show up consistently. So it's kind of every real estate agent on the planet. I feel like if you're a good one, at least you've read the book, the compound effect, um, or you've listened to it on audible, right. But the idea is that it's consistent and persistent effort over time turns into the compound effect. It's the domino of if you do it enough times, eventually you get to a place where it's really not that hard. And then all the chips start to fall. And what's funny about this is I'm having like a full circle deja vu moment because I remember when Jeff, you and I, for the very first time talked on the phone, it was almost three years ago. And I remember standing in my backyard telling you what my goals were for the first year or kind of what the coming year was for me. Right. And what those goals look like are wildly different than what they are now, because I did all of those things that I was talking about to you um, consistently and persistently to the point where now we're having a different conversation because my position in the industry has really grown and, and changed. And, and now it's my job, in my opinion, to show up and talk about it. Um, mm. And I think that that's the point, right? If I didn't talk about it, or if I didn't show up and talk about it, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to you or to some other people who have helped, quote, helped me um, along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. By the way, just in case you're wondering, um, to uh, the percentage of, if you, if you can run a 5k, you're in the top 10% of people on the planet because the majority of people on the planet cannot even walk a 5k. So just, just in case you're wondering, um, you, you now are an authority because if you're in the top 10% of anything, you're, it's an elite class and then therefore you can do something that most can't. So you should yeah. keep talking about that, even though you wouldn't consider, like compared to me, who's been a hardcore runner for, you know, my entire life, uh, you, that's how you compare yourself. 
and uh, you shouldn't. You should compare yourself to the rest of the world. And therefore, your journey is distinctly different than mine, which is going to resonate with people. It will actually attract people into your brand and your person, you as a human. And um, it's, it's, it changes the game. This is, this is the thing that, uh, w- especially as we talk about leaders, is um, one of the things that I'm always talking about is if you've noticed the companies, and I'm not just talking about real estate, just any company. The companies that have really just kind of have been in growth mode over the last five years, most of those companies, not all of them, one of the leaders, if that, if not the owner, the president, the CEO, something uh, has more of a, a public persona and the, the world feels like they know this man or woman. And that is a direct correlation to the growth of the business because that's the way the shift of the world is evolving. And so you running a 5K, it's a journey. It's a story. You're going to tell your story. And now even you, somebody who already just, you teach this shit. Uh, Now, all of a sudden, you're going to probably pick up new followers and new connections and have new conversations because you're doing something different that's going to inspire somebody or it's going to be relatable to somebody who's going through the same thing. And um, it's it's really that easy. And you just have to shift that, that mindset of, Stop, stop, stop thinking that you have to be the leader of your industry, because when you think like that, you're just, you're lumping yourself into a diluted pool of everyone because everybody has that same ability. Well, I also think you're, I think you stress yourself out when you do that, right? Like if you compare yourself to another real estate agent in another market who maybe has the same amount of people on their team and you're like, oh, well, they're doing way more business than I am, what I must, I must suck, right? Why am I sucking so bad? The reality is like your journey is different than their journey. Um, And I think that this ties into a couple of things. And and I recently wrote an article about this actually on for Inman um, talking about the same, very same topic. Um, So I'll I'll tie some of that into it. Um, And then I also interviewed, you know, everybody knows who Bill Hart is. Um, I interviewed Bill on my podcast, Coffee and Questions. Um, and we talked about this and, you know, Bill obviously has a significant position at Movement Mortgage as far as leadership success coaching and what that looks like for leaders. Um, and he had some really incredible insight into as leaders, it is literally our job. And he actually believes that it sh- should be on your job description if you accept one of these positions, right, to have to have a social presence, period, right? Because, and again, he, his point was talking about leaders um, in quote power positions in, in different organizations. But again, I do think it relates to what we talked about uh, any form of a leader, um, but it centers around three things, right? And it centers around, um, well, I'll say three things, but in reality, there's three actions, if you will, um, that I think will make it easier for people to come to social media and talk more freely Um, and have an easier time breaking down, you know, what am I supposed to be talking about? Does this matter? Will anyone care? Um, Kind of alleviating some of those fears. Um, But before I get into the three things, here's what I'll say. Uh, Your social presence is no longer a matter of if I get to it, I will. But now it has to be a matter of, can I afford not to do this? Um, And can I afford to skip this if I have to? How should I say this? If I can I afford to skip this if I want to create any form of influence, even if it's just within my own team, right? And I have, we have an agent that uh, has hired us recently and she's a big EXP agent. She has like 175 people in her downline, something like that, right? Making a boatload of money in uh, overrides or not overrides, I'm sorry, in rev share and all the things. Um, And she called me many, she's been a client for, I don't know, six months or so, but she called me and she said, can I send you the list of everybody in my downline, because I don't think any of them really use social media. And I was like, well, send me the list. We'll get my team on it. And we'll, we'll have our, my team go through and actually like try to find all of these, you know, 175 people and connect with them from your account on Instagram. And I shit you not, we went through three quarters of those people. And if they had an account and had barely anything on it, um, and if they I would say most of them had an account with like one or two, maybe three posts. Uh, they were very old. Uh, their profile picture was like them holding their baby or like their dog, right? It was very 
it was really missing the mark truthfully. And I said to my client without naming names, right? I said to my client, I said, if all you did for the next 365 days is speak into these 175 people and change the way that they present themselves on social media, that alone will double your business in 2023. Like I guarantee it, right? Because all those people are following you for a reason. They are on your team or in your downline, however you want to phrase that for a reason, right? They believe in your influence and they believe in what you can do for their business. Now you're doing it, right? You at the front of your team are leading them and your social media is, is amazing and it looks phenomenal. Honestly, her content's probably my favorite of all of our clients. Um, so if all you did was as their leader spoke into your downline and did nothing but focus on that and help all 175 of those people make a difference in the presence that they have, I don't even want to know how much more money she would make. I mean, a lot, right? Um, and that's what it comes down to. And so that I'll, I'll say the three things super fast. And then Jeff, you and I can dissect all three of them because I think you'll love them. But the first one, um, as far as three specific, specific actions that leaders need to take when it comes to social media, um, this is how I break them down personally. And, and again, this is the, the easiest way that I can articulate even what I do, right? But number one is document your heart moving moments. And Jeff, you actually did this yesterday um, and I post or I replied to it. Um, you documented a heart moving moment for you as a dad um, where winter is her last time of you carrying her up the stairs, putting her in bed as a three-year-old, right? And it's this moment of like, Jeff is a dad. He is a real guy behind the social facade, if you will, um, of your influence. Um, and those heart centered moments is what keeps conversations going. It it's what spurs new ones. It allows you to resonate with those who you are leading, even if you don't know it, right? Because anybody that's following you on social media, anyone that is following your content and actively seeking it, you're leading them. If, even if you don't realize that you are leading them, you are offering them something for them to follow or for them to connect with. So again, leadership is defined uniquely, right? But um, oftentimes, right, your employees, your team members, um, anyone who takes direction from you is watching your every move um, and they wanna see you as that person. They want to feel connected to you. And um, this goes into the psychology side of things, but people wanna feel seen, they wanna feel heard. Um, they ultimately want to feel appreciated. Um, and so you must be willing in my opinion, to show up in those raw and very vulnerable moments like you did yesterday, Jeff, and, and like I did yesterday when I posted about the run. Um, so I don't know what your take is, is on number one, but what I call it for anybody who's taking notes, um, I call it document your heart moving moments, right? So the first action you need to take as a leader is be willing to document your heart moving moments. That That's why the, 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 you mentioned the word psychology, and that is the reality of this. So for those of you that are here on Zoom, first of all, I applaud you for being here because you're taking a, a step in the right direction compared to everybody else, because most people don't take this very seriously. But the reality yeah. is simply this, uh, and I think I mentioned this in the beginning, our industry, they have it all wrong. Uh, mortgage, real estate, all wrong as it, as it relates to marketing on social, as it relates to showing up on social. Um, because you know we're just a bunch. You're just a bunch of spammers. I'm not going to say we because I'm not. You're a bunch of spammers by and large. And uh, when you think of the psychology of why social media was created, it was created essentially by Facebook. Let's just give them the credit, not MySpace. Let's give Facebook the credit. And it was a way to connect with other college students on other campuses and friends from high school to connect with people, not to be marketed to. And now, of course, social media has evolved to where it is today, and it's actually getting to the point where I think people are getting pissed about anybody who goes onto social to market their business. I actually think there's going to be a reverse psychology component in the coming years that is actually going to destroy people's social media strategies and destroy their image because all they do is talk about their business. And so, like you said, like number one, hands down your strategy on social should be defining who you are as a human being, which is going to create pockets of quote unquote raving fans and people who can connect with you and resonate with you and relate to you because they have something in common with you. Why did Michelle see my post last night? Because she has a small child. So 
the algorithm knows to show that to her. I post two to three times a day. I guarantee she didn't see all my posts, but she saw that one because the algorithm knew to show it to her. And that's the thing is like, you got to play this game and understand that there actually is a computer behind the scenes that is d- disseminating where stuff's going to go. And I promise you, if all you do is talk about and post about real estate, there's a reason why your posts are getting no engagement. Well, and also I had, I, my, at the very beginning of this conversation, I said to you guys uh, that there will be some people who believe that they don't need that to be successful. I don't need Instagram. I don't need social media. I don't need any of that. And I was literally on a call with a client this morning who, mind you, they didn't pay to be a client. Their company reached out to me and said, I'm paying for this person to become a client of yours. Um, you know, we're, we're fronting it essentially. Um, and I, and I don't like that. It doesn't sit well with me, but at the same time, you know, for us at the end of the day, it was a matter of, I want to support this organization because they have asked me to speak multiple times and and they were people who I, I just felt strongly about supporting. Right. So long story short, we accepted the offer to, to help this particular team with their social media. Um, and on the phone with him, he was like, well, truthfully, yeah, I know that our content on our Instagram, you know, is stock templates from Canva. And I know a lot of it is like stock photos of other people or, um, and a lot of it is, uh, very mortgage 101-y or talking about things that are related to interest rates or conforming loan limits and all of these things. But Hey, you know what? Like, I think our person insert assistance name, uh, has done a pretty good job. And I said, X client, we'll just call him John, right? I was like, John, that is not accurate, right? Because if I go to your content and I don't know who you are as a team or who you're, who you are, even as the leader of this organization, all of that stock content, you're paying an assistant a salary to post content that will do absolutely nothing for you. Like that is a waste of whatever her salary is. Because if all you had her do was focused on documenting moments of you guys out and about in the community, documenting moments of you being a dad. Um, This particular client, his wife is an interior designer and they just custom built like a 5,000 square foot house in Washington state. It is stunning, right? And I was like, if you just document the day-to-day struggles of building a house and show that it's not roses every five seconds, you're gonna have a lot of conversations with people who are going through the same struggles or have. Yes. Um, in the past. So you may think, oh, I'm, my company's posting on my social media account for me. And so, yay, again, I've checked my social media box, but the reality is it's a complete waste of energy. It's a complete waste of time. And frankly, if you're paying for it, it's a waste of money. Um, and it comes back to the first of the three actions, uh, which is document your heartstring moments or things that matter to you in your life. And the amount of conversations you have and the quality of conversations you have will dramatically change. And I remember, um, might be a TMI for everybody watching on, on Zoom or on Facebook, but I remember when I found out I was pregnant, um, I remember sending Jeff in DMs that I was pregnant. And, I, and like I sent him a screenshot of the pregnancy test because I was so flipping excited because Jeff and I had just talked a few months before that as my husband and I were going through like a fertility doctor and talking to, um, her, or, you know, kind of trying to figure out like what was going to happen for, for us as we move forward and trying to have kids. And so I remember having that conversation with Jeff. And then I remember setting him the pregnancy test thinking like Jeff is going to Jeff's invested in this with us because I just talked to him about it. Um, and so this is a, a fun moment for me to be able to share with him. Um, and our relationship is obviously what it is three years later. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of power in those heartstring moments because anytime Jeff thinks about that, I hope he laughs or smiles and, and as do I. Um, and those are your connective pieces. And Jeff and I have done a ton of business together since then. And that's the point um, is what are the heartstring moments that you can share with your people that create connection, that build that if something, you know, it, if something comes up, I want you to think about me, right? As the person to be a part of that Mm -hmm. Um, and vice versa. Uh, And that's what number one is all about. So for sake of time, I'll go to number two. Well, keyword, yeah. Keyword, keyword document. Just get in the habit. It's not, you're not a creator. You're a documenter. You're just documenting what you're doing on a daily basis. Go on. Number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number two is showing up in your messages. We've talked about this before, but um, 
doing engagement, which means leaving intentional comments and sending authentic DMs uh, is often, in my opinion, something that people just say to themselves like, oh, I'll just get to that when I get to that, right? Um, or I'll just have somebody else send messages for me. Um, and there is power in that, right? Like my, I actually have three girls and we're in the middle of hiring a fourth um, that work 40 hours a week for me full time doing engagement on behalf of our clients because our job is to sound like them, talk like them, get to know them on a very personal level. Like when we build a client profile for somebody, we literally have like five pages of notes about these individuals when, when we start to actually even engage on their behalf, right? Because I need to know the name of Winter's Montessori school or her, the Goddard school, I think is actually what it is. I don't think it's a Montessori school, but same, same, right? Um, we need to know that she's in swim school because I saw that in stories, right? And she's in level four now, like all the things, like we need to know that because those are the things that allow us to engage on your behalf. Now, if you don't have somebody doing engagement for you, you have to be willing to show up to that level. And this is where I struggle. I mean, I get VAs, I understand them. I have had them in the past. A lot of people have them and that's wonderful. But I personally do not believe that a VA should be employed to answer your messages or send spam messages out um, or the automatic message, which I get all the time. And I don't know if you get these, Jeff, but I hate them. But if you send a message to somebody and they it has like an auto responder that says, thanks so much for contacting me. If you, for all your real estate needs, here's my cell phone number. Um, and it's like this auto message. Like they didn't obviously didn't even read my message to them. They have a bot responding on their behalf. And I have had several people who I have engaged with, who I have straight up DM'd back and been like, wow, that is wildly inappropriate for the message I just sent as far as a response. And secondly, I know you're not a client of mine, nor will you probably be but you should really delete that message or turn it off, like just straight up because it is such a massive turnoff to people who are being genuine and showing up authentically to engage with you. Um, so one of the things those, that those we teach our people, clients- those, and one are the of the, same, those are the same people that don't get, they don't understand what we're talking about today. Those are the, that's- No, the, those are, and I don't think those are the people that are on here, hopefully. <laughs> but um, the thing I always tell people, for those of you guys who are wanting to get better at returning messages or showing up in your messages, what I tell people, and, and you know, Jeff, you and I have a mutual friend, Grant Wise, that's how we met many, many years ago. Um, but um when, or not how we met, but how I met Grant was through you. Um, and Grant actually had to schedule 30 minutes in his calendar every single day, Monday through Friday, just to be able to respond to his messages because of the structure and the way that they're developed. Like he has to have time during his day to sit there and actually respond to all of his messages. So we reached out to his assistant and was like, Hey, can you please block a 15 minute window in, in Grant's morning and a 15 minute in Grant's afternoon, because if not, like he just can't get to them the way he should. He can't put the energy and the effort into responding to them the way he should. But as busy as Grant is, as busy as we all are, it's not an excuse to not be the one to do that. Um, and so you guys as leaders, right, again, define leader or authority, however you want to, um, you have to be willing to show up in your DMs as yourself. Now you can certainly have a team that can help you execute the initial touch point, but nobody can ever be you. And, and you guys have to be willing to show up that way. Um, and I'm a huge believer in that. Yeah. Somebody actually described it um, just to, to earlier today. I, I had a, a guest on and he's, he described because we've become a very lazy society as it, as it relates to engagement. And he said, a like on a post is the equivalent of walking by somebody as a human, just walking literally by them on a pathway or in, in, a, in a store or wherever and going like this. That's it. That's what the equivalent of a like has now become. Very informal, very not, not it's just really kind of dead. Really it's doesn't like, mean it's it. the courtesy like, hey, like, and you didn't even say, hey, you just nodded your head. That's it. That's what a like is nowadays. So to, to number two, showing up in messages means being like, giving authentic comments. Um, I'm guilty of, of, of emoji commenting, but I still feel like I have to take, at least I had to take the time to go find the right emojis to do the right reply. I'm just showing love to the person, to their post. You know, when I have something to say, when I type words. Um, otherwise, if you see emojis from me, it's just me showing you love. And, uh, but as, as, as somebody who's 
who's really wanting to grow their Instagram is well, probably why you're here. Just get on there and make comments that are going to make them feel special because you commented and probably get them to respond to your response, which then starts that flywheel of conversation. And who knows where it goes from there? Yeah, I mean, totally. And I, I said to some somebody earlier, it takes the average DM conversation in my my data and what we've seen for our clients and even for myself personally um, is about four to five touch points with that person before they either ask about business or reach out to me directly about it. Or I have the intuitiveness to be able to say, I think now makes sense for me to actually have that conversation or to drop that. Hey, by the way, I know you have X, Y, and Z coming up or, Hey, um, you know, I was actually recently on X, Y, Z podcast. I think I, you know, if you want to jump on zoom, it might be a good fit for us to do one together. Right. But there's two pieces to that puzzle. Are you intuitive enough to understand where you're at in that kind of lead flow, right? With somebody. And are you aware enough of this person is sitting there waiting for you to potentially ask that? Um, so sometimes you have to have the balls to just say it, right? Like, hey, I'd love to go get coffee. But doing that, hey, I want to go have coffee, or hey, let's jump on a Zoom can't be your first message. And that's the point. Yeah. Um, because it will turn people off. Now, um, the third thing is, and, and God, I cannot emphasize this enough, um, is putting an emphasis on your personal brand within your brand, right? And I, I think a lot of people talk about this regularly, but I, I also just hosted uh, Stacey Soleil from Follow Up Boss. A lot of you, you guys probably use Follow Up Boss as your CRM system, which I certainly would approve of. Um, I believe follow-up boss is, is excellent. There's a lot of good ones, but long story short, Stacy, if any of you guys follow Stacy, Stacy has a very significant personal brand within the follow-up boss brand, right? So if you go to her on Instagram and you see what Stacy does, I can, as soon as I see one of those purple posts, like I just know it's Stacy, right? But I also know that Stacy is part of follow-up boss because of how she articulates things, how she posts about them and, and the things that she does. But here's the thing, right? And Stacy herself will be the first person to tell you this. Um, and she did on, on our podcast episode is that there will be changes in her life where she may not work for follow-up boss forever, right? The company she left to come to follow-up boss she even said on live recording, she never thought she'd leave that company, but follow-up boss was an opportunity that she had to take, right? And so the reality with building a personal brand and why this is truly so incredibly important um, is you have to be able to be portable with it, right? So when you're showing up as a leader, you have to think about that. Like if you're, and I think Tristan, you know, obviously making a big announcement of going to SEO magazine and, or success magazine and going to EXP and making a lot of the big changes that he's made personally, the thing that's beautiful about Tristan doing that is Tristan still has the own, his own personal brand within this monster organization that he might work for. So I think of Tristan as Tristan, a dad, a husband, somebody who likes to travel and likes to talk about things that are outside of real estate, right? So I still think of Tristan that way. But yes, obviously he is who he is and he's a mogul in the industry and we all know it. But the reality is that he has put a significant significant presence or significant emphasis on his presence on a personal side that has really allowed him to be portable and to make changes and to go different places, just like Stacy has um, over the years where Stacy is able, has been able to create a personal brand for herself and carry it with her where she goes. Yeah. Um, and as leaders, I think that's so important because if we don't, right, what happens to our presence? Let's say, um, you know, we're at EXP and all of our branding is orange and blue. Everything is orange and blue. Um, what happens if you leave and you go to Keller Williams or you leave and you go to my home group or you leave and you go to Exit Realty or any of them, name a name hundred of them, yeah. different brokerages you could go to, right? What happens to your content? All of a sudden you have to whoop, halt and now you have to undo all of that or go pay somebody to rebrand everything for you. And now you're kind of up shit's creek, if you will, um, as far as having to take a significant pause on your presence. And then when you do go back and show up again, it looks totally different. And all of a sudden you have this like massive change and it creates kind of like a, huh, kind of vibe to the people that are consuming your content. But the best compliment in the world is if somebody reaches out to you and it's like, oh, I didn't even realize you left them or, oh, I didn't even realize you changed companies. Yeah. Like, I I'd rather you not know, 
right? And again, I'm, I'm, I don't sell real estate. I have my real estate license, but I don't sell real estate. So it really doesn't matter for me. But um, what I tell people is if I, for whatever reason, were to pick up and, and go start another brand at the end of the day, people still know who Michelle Burma Michael is outside of the Instagram power method. But the reality is that the Instagram power method also associates back to me. And that's the whole point. Um, and you guys have to be able to establish a personal brand that can go with you, especially in a leadership position. Again, define leader how you want. Yeah. Totally agree. I love that. I think there's a three. I, why don't you, why don't you do a quick recap of the three? Yeah, um, for sure. So number one, um, we'll go back to the very beginning, right? Documenting your heart string or heart moving moments. Um, and that goes back to what Jeff and I were talking about posting about winter, me posting about running, um, the things that, you know, are kind of calling us in, in our day. Um, and, and some people call them God moments. You can call it whatever you want. Um, it, it's relative to you and to your life. Um, but the second thing is showing up in messages as you, right. Again, you can hire someone to help you. And, and there's lots of things in my opinion that go into that, but nobody will ever be able to be you to move that meeting into let's go have coffee, let's go on Zoom, let's do what we need to do um, to potentially have this conversation about business outside of Instagram DMs. Um, and then the third thing is putting an emphasis on your personal brand, right? Can you pick it up and move it uh, without anybody feeling like there's this big hiccup or roadblock um, or uh, roadblocks the wrong word, but this big hiccup in your content or kind of this lapse because you're making this big change. So um, yeah, you know, the reality the is on, on and the you last guys can... one, you know, on the last one too, though, is a lot of people don't even have a personal brand in, of, of any kind. And, and yeah. so, I mean, that, that, that could be just an eye opening moment for a lot of you when you think about, well, if I change companies, how would it impact my brand? When in some cases, sadly, some of your audience might say, oh gosh, you know, I didn't even realize you worked, you know, like they're not even going to have to recognize that you're even in real estate because you just don't do any job of doing anything. And so, um, you know, this is, uh, this is old news at this point. And, and uh, honestly, what we're, what we're saying today is just kind of a, a continuation of, of, of the constant reminder, but this, like, I think Michelle, you said at the beginning, like, this isn't, this isn't, an extra anymore. Like this is, this is, a. I, I truly believe it. It's, it's why I spend so much time doing all this stuff on social, because I truly believe that our industry is only going to survive if we lean in more to authenticity and embracing social, because um, the tech companies in Silicon Valley are creating the robots that are going to replace you and they will be successful. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And um, because they're, they know what they're doing. And so it's like the, the only way that you can beat them is getting to the consumer um, and tugging at that heartstring, as, as you mentioned, uh, because that will overtake the robot's quick response or the robot's ability to, to be more efficient. And um, Because nobody can ever be you. And that's what it comes down to. And um, I think we'll tie it up with a bow. Uh, you know, what will this cost you? I think is a big question for people, right? And I don't mean money. I mean, like emotionally or uh, effort-wise. It's like, what will doing all of the things that Jeff and I are talking about co actually cost you? Um, and there's really two things um, and it's personal responsibility and professional accountability. Those two things are part of how, I've gotten to where I've gone, Jeff, you've gotten to where you've gotten anybody that's watching this or watches it on the recording. It's most likely how you've become successful. And if you're not successful yet, it's probably why you're on this in the first place of trying to figure out how to be, um, is, you know, the personal responsibility of it is my job as the leader of my organization to show up so that people know, well, if Michelle's doing it, I have to do it. I don't have an excuse. Right. And I have a team, I have eight girls or seven girls plus me. So I have a total of eight on my team, if you will. Um, and if I didn't ever post on social media, how could I ever expect any of the rest of my girls to, right? And even still now, I still have to lead them and still have to explain to them why it's so important, even though they work for the Instagram power method, like it's wild to me, right? Uh, it is literally the company you work for and we do it for everybody else all day, but yet sometimes we still struggle with doing it for ourselves. Um, so the personal responsibility, it is my job 
to explain and show and lead by action, not by talking at them or talking down to them um, to help them understand why this is so important. Um, and professional uh, or professional accountability, I guess is the second one, right? But if your organization hired you to be in the position that you're in, or if you're me, right, and you run your own organization, it is my professional duty to continue to show up that way if I want to maintain my client base, if I want to maintain generating new clients or have new relationships form. Like if I didn't, why would anybody ever hire me to, to stand on a stage and talk about Instagram? They wouldn't, right? Because well, who the hell is this girl trying to talk about Instagram and she has doesn't have anything going on? Yeah. Um, so it's personal responsibility and professional accountability. And, um, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll throw it back to you, Jeff, is, um, this article I, I wrote in extreme detail, but it's actually on inman.com. You guys can just Google, or, uh, if you, if you guys are subscribers to Inman, just look up Michelle Berman, Michael last name is M I K E L and it'll pop right up. Um, it's my most recent one and probably my favorite one, truthfully. And what's the best way to connect with you? Instagram. I mean, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, um just in Berman case anybody wasn't paying person. attention. Yeah. So tell them where to tell them where to find you. I was just gonna say Berman Media Social on Instagram. Um, even if you just type in Michelle Berman Michael, and again, Michael is M-I-K-E-L, but it'll come right up. Um, even if you just half type it, it'll pop up. But um I I love connecting with all of you guys. And um, even if it's just to motivate you, like I want to have that responsibility because I just am super passionate about what we're doing and um I think that every single one of us needs to, to be a little bit more hyper-focused on, on what our brand actually represents emotionally and um, value driven wise, if you will, um, as we move into the new year. I love it. Thank you again. Always a pleasure. Always fun. Always valuable. Thank you guys for being on listening. Michelle, I will see you next month. Yes, I will be here. Bye-bye. <laughs>